Hey you folks, Cool18 here, and welcome to my very first proper video on City Skylines. Of course, I have covered the game a little bit in the past. I had a gameplay video from PDXCon, as well as uh, some gameplay footage in the interview that I did with the CEO of Colossal Order. Colossal Order is the developer of the game. It is being published by Paradox Interactive. Um, although, uh, I think Paradox actually have a fair amount of, uh, of influence in terms of the game development, or certainly Colossal Order really like the way that Paradox kind of operate internally for their own development and are trying to clone some of those techniques. And I think that's actually a really, really good sign. So first of all, what is City Skyline? Well, obviously it is a city building simulator. It's obviously um, going to be very reminiscent of SimCity, the most classic of all city builders uh, ever. I mean, there's gonna be a similarity in looks. I mean, we're building cities and there's buildings and roads. So obviously there's gonna be a little bit of sameness. This is not the same game as Cities XL. Cities XL and Cities XXL and all those, completely different company, completely different game. Um, I've had some videos on there complaining about some of the performance issues in Cities XXL, that sort of thing. I will say this about City Skyline, this thing performs like a beast. Oh my god, the frame rates, um, I've had fantastic performance, not a single slowdown yet. I am nowhere close to uh, maxing out the total size of... Um, of the environment and even then like the space I'm using is pretty spread out so it'll be interesting to see exactly how it performs if you do reach the absolute limit of uh, how much you can develop but um, so far everything has been absolutely absolutely good um, I feel like this is a good homage to sort of like the classic more old-school SimCity ish kind of thing um, there's always a problem when you've got a long-running series a long-running franchise like SimCity or Civilization would be a good example um, with Civilization V, you know, uh, we're like, okay, this is a good series. Everyone really, really enjoys playing Civilization. Do we mix it up? Do we make some changes? And when Civ V came out and they announced hex tiles and they announced one unit per tile, what kind of craziness is that? Would that work? Would it be a disaster? We don't know. As it turned out, it worked out really, really well, and Civ V is a fantastic game. And then you look at the new SimCity, the SimCity 5 or SimCity 2013. Um, and it's like, listen, we're going to change things up. We're going to have this uh, multiplayer component. It's going to be real important that there's a lot of cities involved, this sort of always online kind of mechanic. And we're going to introduce uh, the importance of like resources, like mining for ore and then turn it into alloys that you can then turn into electronics and so on and so forth. Um, what a bold move. Hey, what could possibly go wrong? And then it turned out, well, a lot went really wrong. Um, and so this game really tries to stay close to, I think, the roots of the city building genre. Um, it, it aims to be a little bit more simple and focused and refined. It's like, you want to lay down roads, you want to zone buildings. I, I, I have to say, there's a lot of things in this game, though, I'm super impressed by some of the details. Uh, I do like, there's, you know, little animations and things that go on most of the buildings. You can he see here, the fans are operating on top of this building over here. Um, every single person, that's one of the things, if you, um, if you zoom, up, zoom out here, I mean, it's not a huge city, but there's a lot of stuff going on, but you can see my population here is just a little over 30,000. The reason is, this is an accurate count of every single simulated sim in this game. Um, as far as we understand it, every single person, like if I click on this person over here, Peace Harvey, Pierce Harvey, actually is one of the people in my population count. Um, if we click on a building here, you can see that this, this hot well not it's not a high rise but this apartment building which has uh six stories i guess seven if you count the ground floor and you know quite a few windows going on only houses 10 households and the households you can see their count of people we've got um 17 19 uh 35 37 don't try to do math on uh on on video here yeah 37 accounted for over here as well so 37 people live in this building which could clearly house uh, I would say maybe a few more than that in real life based on the look of it. Um, that plant building is abandoned, so it's a bad sign. This one here, 24 households. Actually, it's not a bad count of people, now that I think about it. But obviously, in real life, this sort of building here might house um, a fair deal more people, and, and so on and so forth. So they've erred on the side of accurately representing how many sims are in the game with this number. I think based on the size of the city, you could probably do something like, I don't know, just quadruple this number in your head. Um, to represent maybe if this city were in real life, how many people might live there, for example. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all that kind of stuff. They're like, we're not going to fudge the numbers. We're going to keep everything completely obvious and evident about exactly how things go. And uh, I like it. I like the graphic style. I think it's nice and clean. Uh, I do really like... Oh, and I forgot one of the other details with these peeps. But I like uh, picking one of these cars up and then just following it as it drives around. 
tells you who owns it, where that person lives, where they're working, and exactly where they're going right now. Sometimes they're going shopping, sometimes they're going to work. You can click on the, the link over here to go straight to the building and uh, see what you can do. You can see here I've got a bit of a traffic jam because we're going from a six-lane highway down to a, a two-lane one, which is going to cause a bit of a bottleneck, and I've got a bit of a bit of an adjustment there. See my elevated train over here. Trains can go over roads. You can't have your elevated train literally on top of the road, like following along it, because um, these posts here have to um, end up in empty areas. So you can't have the train running directly on top of the road, but you can have it go across. I think that area looks uh, quite spiffy, actually. I'm very bad at making pretty cities, so, you know, big disclaimer there, of course. Um, but yes, I want to find an example. I'm going to pause just to make it maybe a little easier to find, hopefully. There are... Oh, right over here. This is one of my favorite things in the entirety of the game. So we've got uh, Mary Crowley over here, who is uh, uh, a senior, so unemployed, but going to the drugstore. And she has her dog over here, which is following her. Some Sims have dogs that follow them around. And we can rename this person. This person can be... Um, uh, Bella, Bella the dog, and here's the thing, this, this dog will always be called Bella, uh, oh, Mary Crowley got in the car, there was a parked car over here, so she got into that, and, uh, I guess she left her car on the street, she's got an awesome looking sports car, go Mary, well done, so she's tra still trying to get to the drugstore, which, is this it, this is a fancy boutique, where did Mary go, oh, right over here, there's the drugstore, so she drove the car up a little bit to get there, car is actually owned by her, so seems a, maybe a little unnecessary for Mary to have to have gotten into her car at that point, but she'll finish her business over here and then leave. And you can track these people all day long. Hey, let's follow this police car and just get a sense of, uh, of driving around the city. There's a bit of a tilt shift effect, so things in the background here are going to be a little bit blurrier. You can turn that on or off or actually change the intensity um, quite a bit. Now, a word uh, about, uh, you know, reviews and stuff. Uh, currently, actual reviews are still embargoed. Uh, so this is sort of a preview, let's play. Uh, streaming is also fine, but actual review statements are embargoed, which mostly means um, you won't be getting like a Metacritic score. You won't be getting a score for the game um, until the release date, and that's because uh, Paradox are still currently working on it. The version that I'm playing now may not be the version, or not Paradox, Glossal Order are still working on it. The version um, you get when you play may not be the version that I get, so they just want to make sure there's no uh, there's no review scores that go out um, before uh, before the actual date because it might not represent the actual product. Um, it, I don't know if we'll get a good example if this guy turns on his sirens. If we see an ambulance, there's a bus there, lots of people getting on and off. See, where, oh, I can hear the ambulance. Where is it? Is it one of these? Yeah, you can see the ambulance actually. Their lights quite loud here. Uh, their lights flash on the buildings, which I think is really cool. I think that's a nice nice little touch there. Um, but there you go. So the room, the, the the game does go well. Oh, the uh, the water mechanics are phenomenal. You can see I built a dam here, and check it out. Like it actually affects the water level. If I were to delete this dam, uh, the water would pour back in. Um, the water simulation is not like instantaneous. You're not going to get a big whoosh. You'll delete the dam for a second. You'll get sort of like water, a wall of water is still sort of there, and then it'll it'll slowly start to, to pour in. I think anyone who's ever played something like Minecraft or whatever is used to the fact that the water simulations um, process a little bit over time. Um, you can see my muddy water over here. This is from all my sewage pipes, my drain pipes. I'm not processing the sewage in any way whatsoever. So all the water here is just absolutely filthy and disgusting. It's really important that the, um, uh, that the water intake pipes, which are over here, don't actually soak up any sewage or horrible, horrible things will happen. Um, you can see I've got quite a bit of solar power going around. I've got a little bit of coal power plant, I think, down here. Uh, which is, of course, a little bit polluty, but um, this is a relatively safe area. We've got some industrial over here, and I think it's far enough away from most of these houses. If we go and take a look at the pollution map, you can see here it ends just shy of the houses. If need be, I could put out some more trees and parks and stuff like that to fight it off. You can see here I've got a decent amount of trees underneath the rail and a little bit of a gap uh, between. We've got some commercial areas, and the housing starts over here, and there's basically no pollution left at that point, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um... Industry, like actual industry, is the only isn't the only place you can have people work. If I click on this building over here. This is a commercial center. Um, wait, is that an actual commercial center? No, see, this is an office, isn't it? Or these are offices. My bad. That ah, there we go. Yeah. So this is commerce where people go to shop. Um, it does employ some people, but also just residents will go to commercial areas to shop and get a little bit happier. But this is an office. This is a place where people can work. 
and get jobs, but it's not industry, so it's quite a bit cleaner. It tends to require a lot more education. You can see here, these offices do not want any uneducated workers whatsoever. They want three educated, that is to say, I think primary school, uh, five well-educated, which I think is someone who went to primary and secondary, and then there's highly educated, which I believe is people who went to university. You can see here they don't actually want any highly, highly educated ones, um, but they ended up with one anyway. So they have one over-educated worker, which, you know, maybe makes the worker a little bit unhappy that he's not working the primo job. And if I mouse over here, I can see uh, angry... Angry Clans Mobile Games, that's a great name. You can see here, uh, building needs to be covered by more services to allow it to be upgraded. So it tells you, it gives you a little bit of a hint as to what kind of stuff it might be looking for. And then we can go into our other maps over here and see, okay, well, it technically has um, medical coverage currently uh, from, where's my medical center? Right over there, the, the big blue glow. So I've got a bit of a clinic over here and it technically reaches this area, that's good. Um, let's take a look at, we've got water, that's fine. Um, garbage, technically, you get covered there. Uh, what about fire? You've got that. Police, you're okay there. School, no, no public transit, and, um, we might need a little bit better garbage coverage, but we'll get there. City is still growing, is still processing. I've got some of these special unique buildings over here. You've got, uh, right over here, these unique buildings unlock when you reach certain criteria. You can see here, my Plaza of the Dead. I need to fill three cemeteries, and it will unlock this building. Uh, which can look cool. Unlocking them all, so this is a requirement for building the fusion, fusion power plant, which I believe is under here, these monuments. I may be wrong, though. It might be under power, actually. That yeah, fusion power plant. We need a population of 36,000 um, to do that, but I think also if we unlock some of these things, we'll get there. I don't think we need a plaza dead to do it, but I might be a bit wrong. Uh, so we'll get there. What else? These, these have all been built. So I've got the Fountain of Life and Death. Uh, I don't think... Uh, Apparently, I can build more than one. Okay, but it shows me that I've built them, so I, I know. Uh, Mall of Moderation. What do we need for this? Average garbage piling up per building at least 25. So it's a bit of a, like a reward for things going poorly. If I have like a massive garbage pile up, then it will unlock this building. So clearly, I've been on top of my game when it comes to garbage. Oh, here's a building I could place. The Science Center. Um, inside the Science Center, top-notch scientists from all over the world work to find out more of the world we live in. Their latest discoveries are presented to visitors in the exhibition requirement for building the fusion power plant once more. Um, so let's go ahead and put that down and see what we might get. Ooh, it's big. Uh, I can't build right on the highway. Maybe I'll just go ahead and, and tuck it in over here and see what it gives me, actually. Not enough electricity. Uh, is that true? No, no, we're fine. Probably just hasn't uh, processed it yet. There we go. Now it's kicked in. And uh, tourists will come and visit this place. So a lot of these buildings will increase tourism to your city. Uh, where can I get some of that information? I know down here, you can see my tourist income. I'm making... Uh, more than 10% of my income actually comes from tourists as opposed to citizens. So tourists will come in, um, sometimes they'll drive in on the highway. They can also arrive by boat. They can also arrive by train station. This is, that's my com uh, my cargo one. This is my passenger train station, for example. I've got, uh, I think I've got three of these two train stations. One there, one here, and one over here. And people will use the trains back and forth to get around the town. If I click on this train here, oh, this one's... Uh, oh yeah, it's passengers. 240 of 240 it is completely full, this train. So people are making good use out of those. I don't have any subways built yet. I'm um, just using the trains for now. And yeah, pa uh, visitors will arrive in your town that way. Uh, later on, I'll also build an airport. And that's another way to get some tourists and get that sweet, sweet tourist cash. And do we not have enough water? We do. Oh, you know what? I failed to build a pipe over there. There we go. Make sure these, uh, these buildings get a little bit more water, which will make them happy. You can see these abandoned buildings over here. Um, they, people will come and reclaim them, but the problem is while they're empty, it lowers land value, so it can sometimes cause a bit of a chain reaction. So if you go ahead, you can see people get happy when you build those abandoned buildings. Um, and because of that, it boosts up the land value a bit, which actually will encourage people to come back and rebuild in these areas. Or at the very least, will encourage other people to not leave. We could probably beautify this area with a park, too. Um, maybe the Paradox Plaza. Uh, is there way I can stick it in that doesn't involve destroying a existing building? There we go, right over there. Got lots of happy faces. Ta-da! There, very nice. And then if we take a look at our land value chart, which is obviously very valuable, you can see here, um, where did I build a park? Here. The land value over here is really quite high. We've got some extra buildings that are beautifying it. Bit of a dead zone here. We might actually want to tuck in another park. The land value here might be being brought down a little bit by these docks. We'll see how it goes. And a few complaints that there's some dead people around waiting for transport. You'll always get that. Um, 
Honestly, I think it might be a good idea to, like, not pop up the warning instantly as, some, as soon as someone is dead. Cause I feel like as soon as someone dies, you get the little skull and crossbones, and maybe that's not strictly necessary. I do have a lot of death care going on in this town. Take a look at our... Uh, there. Um, actually, my cemeteries are really filling up. And I probably need another crematorium to process these things. I do have a crematorium over here, I think. Let's go ahead and build another one. Um, perhaps right over here. Which will make some people happy because it's some extra death care services. And what will happen from this, if I pause and come in here, we should... There we go. We should start to see these hearses leave. And they will go and make a run and just pick up some dead bodies throughout the city. And uh, do that. Wow, look at this row of traffic. This is probably... I've seen this happen. It's usually when they're trying to go from... Uh, to or from, like, a two-lane to a one-lane. Wow. Oh! Oh, these are people coming into the city. Um, and... I don't know where they want to go. <gasps> it's probably because they're not turning right or left. They're just trying to go straight. I may have to make a bit of an adjustment there. Like any city builder, the game is going to be heavily oriented around uh, managing traffic. This hearse is going to go somewhere. I don't know uh, the hearses, like how they prioritize. If they just go for the oldest person. Uh, did you actually just leave the city? Oh, of course. See, they're leaving the city technically because I don't own this square. So if we zoom to here, I think we'll get a good view. You can see all the, the squares that I have bought. Um, and as my, as my city grows, I'll be able to purchase more. I can purchase up to nine of them in the base game. Um, and... Uh, and, you know, just get more land. It's worth noting each one of these squares here is the same amount of space that you get in SimCity. And even then, it's even better than that because the amount, the, the size of the buildings in this game, I feel, are smaller than in SimCity. Plus, you're not using up, like, a third of your space building, like, an ore mine or something, which happened in SimCity. So, uh, even with just one square, you have a lot more room to work with. And uh, you can have up to nine of them. The map itself that we are looking at here is about, I think it's roughly like five-ish by five-ish, or no, no, it's, it's one, two, three, four wide here. So I think I can purchase this square over here, and then there's a sort of outside area. But you can see here, beach height. What's interesting about it, in my mind at least, it is completely disconnected from my actual city, except for the fact that I finally built this rail. But like this highway, it goes outside of my actual city lines. I can buy this square if I want, no problem. No questions asked. I can I can purchase this and then make changes to it. But I was really happy doing this. And you can see here, the other highway, again, leaves the city. Oh, I do have a connection here. I forgot that I built this connection. That is true. And that's actually where the line of traffic is maybe backing up. We'll see. Make some more adjustments. We'll see how it goes. I mean, that's not a bad traffic jam in any way whatsoever. But I think I could still probably improve it. I don't think I, I um, anticipated this much traffic coming through here when I made this little connection. But I guess I probably should have. Um, yeah, I like this island. I don't know. It makes me really happy that we can have these sort of isolated little areas. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. Um, I'm going to come back with a few guide videos about how some of the different buildings and, and road mechanics work, for example. And then uh, we will also be starting a fresh, brand new, empty city. And growing it from there as a Let's Play. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Uh, make sure, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. And of course, as always, appreciate any sort of like and favorite. And if you don't want to miss an episode, do be sure to subscribe. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.